Hi, I'm Evil Dragon, the guy behind the Dragonbox shop, and today I want to talk a bit about the MCC TV and the MCC 21216. Um, basically, there are small FPGA devices which allow you to play retro games. Let's first take a look at the MCC TV, which is this small device. It's got a USB port for powering, um, AV port where you can connect the AV cable and then have standard chinch, which works with uh, nearly every TV. Then you've got a micro SD card slot where you can put your own games on as well. And two USB ports where you can connect the two joysticks. Right now only joysticks are supported, not yet mouse or keyboard, but that may change in the future. Um, what's a bit sad is that only the included joypad really works right now as you cannot um, change the layout right now. But I've already told it to the developers and we will maybe see an update where you can use basically any USB joystick out there and just reconfigure your input. There's also an AC adapter included in the box which enables you to uh, power up the device. But if you've got a more recent TV which got a USB port for uh, powering HDDs, you can simply use that one and then, well, you've got a small box connected to the TV, no power needed and you can play. Let's take a look at the joystick. Uh, the included joypad is basically a PlayStation 2 clone, um, which is okay. It's not the best one, in my opinion, at least for playing action games. I prefer my old classic joysticks for uh, gaming, but it's okay and it's possible to, possible to play the games with them. That was the MCC TV. Now let's take a look at the MCC 216. It's a bit larger as you can see. It features two PS2 ports for mouse and keyboard. So if you got old mice and keyboards lying around, you can now use them as an Amiga or C64 mouse and keyboard. It got an S-Video output, which is a bit better than the composite output. A cable is included. Um, if your TV doesn't support S-Video, then you need to get an adapter as well which can usually be gotten for a few euros, so it's not that big deal. You've got an audio port as well. You can connect either a 3.5 millimeters uh, to a chinch cable and use it on your TV or stereo, or you can use headphones. You also got a USB power adapter. And on the other side, you got the micro SD card slot, then a USB port where you can connect the same joy pads uh, that works with the MCC TV. No keyboard or mouse yet as well, but again, this might be uh, possible in the future. And you've got two, two nine pin joystick ports where you can connect the standard classic Amiga and C64 joysticks. But remember, most games use port two. So if a joystick doesn't work, use port two. Or you can easily plug them around. Well, that's the main difference of the device here. Um, included in, with the MCC 216 is a classic 9-pin joystick. This actually looks like the original Atari 2600 joystick, but the difference is it got micro switches. So not those uh, lashes which break after uh, one month or two month usage. It's got real micro switches, so the joystick is not too bad. Still, I prefer using my old Competition Pro and classic joysticks for it. That's the main difference in the device. So what's the difference in usage? Of course, you've got a mouse and a keyboard on the MCC T uh, 216, which is very comfortable when using C64 or Amiga. But on the MCC TV, you've got an on-screen keyboard and you can use the analog as mouse and the shoulder buttons as mouse buttons. The different buttons on the uh, MCC TV joypad are being used for swapping disks or swapping joysticks, opening the on-screen keyboard, and uh, the fire button actually are the two shoulder buttons, which is a bit weird at first, but well, actually it works for most games. One issue is that I've already reported to the developers that the fire buttons are spaced at the same time, which is neat for cracker intros, but for games like Turrican or R-Type where the space button has its own use, um, it's not really useful. Basically, the hardware of those two devices is the same. Uh, they're both using an FPGA for, well, not emulating the system, but um, rebuilding the original hardware, which means when it's fully done, it should be exactly the same as the original hardware. Of course, it's work in progress, so the compatibility is not 100% now, but it's getting better with updates. Um, the MCC 216 has a few systems more available right now. Um, you can play Atari 2600, 
Atari 800, C64, Amiga, ZX Spectrum and well a bit of Apple II which is heavily work in progress. And on the MCC TV there's right now Atari 2600, Amiga and C64 available but the other cores should probably be ported as well. Included on the MCC 216 and the MCC TV on the SD card is the uh, licensed clone to Amiga and C64 Forever collection. So you've got a lot of games to start with but what's good is that you can also copy your own D64 or ADF images for the Amiga or ATR for Atari 800 and etc. onto the system and then replay your classic games. So let's take a look at the systems. So here is the main menu of the MCC 216, which is what you get when you switch the device on. Um, you've got multiple cores here, Amiga, C64, Atari, etc. Um, the menu of the MCC TV looks exactly the same, except that we don't have that many cores right now. Let's start with the Amiga core. Um, then you see a list of all the games that are pre-installed. You can use page up and page down to scroll fast through the list. Um, on the MCC TV that's not possible, you, can, you will use the uh, D-pad to uh, scroll up and down, which is not as fast, but it's okay for the, uh, as you won't have thousands of games on the device anyways. With left and right, you can switch to the next uh, area. This is the demo section, and here's the uh, section with the games that I manually copied on the disk. And so I can just, for example, um, put in some disks. 1, 2 and 3, three, di uh, 3 disk drives, then simply start the Amiga Kickstart and then it will load and run the game. Same as uh, on a standard Amiga, it will also take the same uh, amount of loading time because it's not an emulation that's running here, but basically the, the uh, hardware is being em simulated and rebuilt in the FPGA and so there's no turbo uh, drive, disk drive or anything like that. Basically the MCC TV and the MCC 216 run the same games. However, sometimes it happens that you can't use the virtual keyboard like here in Dune. Um, so with the MCC TV I can't type any numbers at the copy protection screen. And with the MCC 216 there's absolutely no problem. No big deal with this game, however, as it crashes shortly after loading anyways. About compatibility, well, I found a lot of great games that run fine. I also found quite a few games that don't run fine, so um, it's still a work in progress. It's, there are a lot of fun games to play, but don't expect every game to work right now. So let's take a look at a few games that work without any issues. Here, for example, is Hurricane 2, one of the best games on the Amiga ever, in my opinion. As you can see, it runs perfectly fine. Right now I'm playing it on the MCC 216 with the Competition Pro joystick, which is of course one of the best joysticks available out there. And there's absolutely no issues with sound or graphics or anything. It just plays like on the original. Of course, if you've got a CRT TV, it looks a lot better than on an LCD TV, but it also plays fine on a standard flat screen you've got today. On the MCC TV, the fire button is linked to both space and fire at the same time, which doesn't work properly with Turrican, because that happens if you press the fire button. First you've got your normal weapon, and each time later you press, you always are shooting your laser beams until you don't have any left. So with the MCC TV right now it's not playable, but I've already told that to the manufacturer, so a small core update which should appear soon, we'll work with that. But on the MCC 216 it runs perfect. Turrican 1 runs as well as Turrican 2. Also a great classic. Turrican 3 didn't run for me, but I didn't try any image out there, so maybe just using a different ADF would have solved the problem. That works for some games. Um, it's similar with Lotus's pre-turbo challenge. The first one works without any issues. I couldn't get the second one to work, but uh, I haven't tried all available discs yet. And I didn't try the third one. I was never a fan of the third one. Well, but at least the first one already works fine. Here's another neat classic jump and run BC kit. Runs perfect as well. Um, some of the games I couldn't get to work were uh, Cannon Fodder, Flat, Battle Isle. But maybe uh, it will be updated in the future. 
and there are still a lot of great games you can play. Here's one of my all-time favorites on the Amiga and that is Pinball Fantasies, the Bones and Bones pinball machine. Um, as you can see it runs absolutely flawlessly without any sound or graphic issues, nice crawling. That's recorded directly from the uh, MCC 216. That's one of the reasons why I say the MCC 216 is uh, way better for me because, well, you need a keyboard to play the pinball um, and you can't remap the joypad as I said uh, right now on the MCC TV so it's totally unplayable on the MCC TV but runs fine on the MCC 216. Okay, here the last game I want to show to you is um, R-Type which works fine as well. Some other games I tried that work fine as well are Grand Monster Slam, Chaos Engine, um, Ghosts and Goblins, Bomb Check, Buggy Boy, Super Frog. So there are uh, quite a lot of games that work fine, also Speedball 2. And of the games that don't work, often they seem to crash while loading. Um, you can see that with Pirate. Pirate even crashes when you try to um, open the disc on the, uh, on the workbench. So it seems that there's some bug in the uh, disk drive routine and not directly in the emulation itself. So I guess it's a hopefully easy bug to fix. And once that one is fixed, then a lot of more games will be compatible um, at once. So let's see what the future brings. And you can already play a lot of great games now. Let's move on to the next four. Let's move to the C64. Um, you've got the game menu of course, you've got the demo menu, you've got your own games and you've got some settings where you can for example enable Jiffy DOS where you need to, well, you need to put the ROM onto the SD card as well which is pretty useful um, because then you can use the turbo loader for all your own games otherwise they load as fast or as slow as on the original C64. Um, another way is uh, you can quickly load games is when you use uh, C64 Forever from Clone2, which you can download at the website, and then you can edit the game menu. And for example, as you can see with Cybernoid here, um, it loads and runs instantly. And this way, with uh, uh, on the PC, you can also create your menu with your own games. So here, for example, is Cybernoid. Um, I don't need to show you many games on the of the C64 on the system because basically uh, the, the C64 core is a lot more compatible so it runs mostly, uh, the game run mostly the same as they do on the C64. Of course when you uh, run games or want to uh, code directly in the system a keyboard is a nice thing as well. Um, so I prefer the MCC 216 here as well, but of course if you just want to play some games like this here you really won't need a keyboard and can play anyways. Here's another C64 game Pac-Mania, but I don't think I need to show you more. Um, as said it runs basically the same as on the C64. Not as many compatibility issues as you've got with the Amiga core. Uh, only thing is it's a bit harder to properly include the games that they run fast but with uh, C64 Forever and the menu files you should also be able to do that and with Jiffy DOS you can easily um, run games of a normal D64 image with fast loader as well. The next core is the Atari 800 which runs a bit different and only on the MCC 216 is mentioned right now. Um, it starts basically in Atari and with F12 you can access settings where you can uh, choose the RAM you got or uh, which ROM you have, if it should run fast or not. And to load again you press F11 and then select the game, for example Ford Apocalypse, with which automatically loads. Well, and then you can play it. Um, I haven't tried too many games as I never had an Atari 800, but um, I've heard that the compatibility of the Atari 800 should be pretty high, so most of the games run the same as on the original system. What I found out though is that those um, K-file compressed games don't work, 
So uh, try to avoid those and only use images with don't have a K file. Well, and then you can also simply run them and play. And there are a lot of great classics that I remember from the C64, um, but I've never played them on the Atari. The next system on the uh, MCC 216 is the ZX Spectrum. Again, the same mini we already know. Uh, you use tape images and you can simply put them in. Press start, now it's loading. Um, just showed the last game I tried, I already tried to load it before. And now we've got an uh, emulated, or well, the spectrum, and all the commands are automatically uh, put in. So I just need to wait until all the commands are in, and then it loads from the tape image. And here you go, there's the game. All you need to do is switch to Kempston joystick, otherwise you can't use the joystick. Use it in port 1. Well, and here is the spectrum. Here you go. And here is the MCC TV. Basically the same menu. Um, I don't have a keyboard, so I can just switch with left and right. Select the game. And for example, I can put in the New Zealand story here. And run the game. Then it's basically the same as before, except that I don't have a real keyboard but a virtual keyboard if I want, which I can show and hide anytime with a button press. I can also switch the joystick controls, uh, so I can change the mouse with the joystick or uh, player one with player two, whatever I want. I can also see what the disk drive is doing, for example, which track is excess, so I can see it's not. Uh, crashed, it's still loading, and of course, once they're done, I can uh, play with a D with a joypad the same as I can play with the other device. So there are a few small issues. Uh, mouse works using the analog controls, which works okay, but if I get too far to the edges, it seems to uh, stop sometimes. But I guess that's just a software issue. It's just uh, correcting the dead zone, so it should be able. Uh, that you can fix those as well with a new update. As a conclusion, both are very promising systems. I prefer the 216 because I love real mice and keyboards. But who knows, maybe the USB port will support mouse and a keyboard as well in the future. Compatibility depends on the system. Atari 800 is running pretty well, C64 as well. Amiga could use a bit more work, but hopefully with updates in the future they will be really kick-ass devices. Right now they are uh, nice for playing a few games in between. You've seen what you can play. Don't expect that all games work, but uh, well, a lot of great games work, so it's a lot of fun.